Hey gang, Chase here, and today we're gonna to be talking about scopes, very essential tools for production and post-production. They allow us to properly evaluate the luminance or brightness of an image and the chrominance or color of that image. We'll be looking at a variety of scopes and be showing you how to read them. Let's get started. For production, there are several scopes that will help you expose your image with confidence. Now I know what some of you are probably thinking right now, why can't I just use the monitor to expose my image properly? And the answer is because your eyes and your brain can be fooled. External elements such as ambient color temperature or the brightness of the room that you're in can affect the way you see the image on the monitor. Not to mention, the monitor you're looking at may not even be calibrated properly. Using scopes is the only way to know for sure what you're recording. The histogram is essentially a bar graph that displays luminance. The brightness levels of the image are displayed along the x-axis with zero representing pure black and 255 for pure white. The y-axis shows us the number of pixels at each brightness value that the image contains. This tells us if the brightness range of a given scene will fit the camera's dynamic range. If the entire graph fits between the left and right margins, we know we're not losing any information because no part of the image is too dark or too bright. If the image is aligned further to the left, that means there's an abundance of darker pixels and we may be losing information due to underexposure. But if the image is to the right, then we know we might be losing information due to overexposure. This is where it gets tricky though, because there really is no right or wrong histogram. Different subjects may be displayed very differently, but may still be exposed correctly. So the histogram is good for telling us the brightness range of a given scene, but not really where the values are falling. To quickly find out what parts of an image are reaching specific luminance ranges, we can use zebras. Zebras are one of the more common in-camera exposure tools. They work by laying a striped pattern over the parts of an image that correspond to a particular luminance range. Zebras can be set differently and are typically used to alert the operator to areas at or approaching overexposure. However, just as the histogram gives us an overall impression of the tonal range, zebras are only giving us a small snapshot of certain luminance values. For a better, more detailed representation, it's best to use a waveform. The waveform monitor is the most commonly used scope out there. It displays the luminance of the corresponding image using IRE values. IRE stands for Institute of Radio Engineers and is a unit used for measuring luminance. The y-axis ranges from 0 IRE, pure black, to 100 IRE, pure white, and anything above 100 is considered super white and is not broadcast safe. Now, unlike the histogram and zebras, we are seeing the full luminance range of the image and exactly where each value occurs. Which leads us to our final production scope, false color. False color is an increasingly popular tool for evaluating exposure. With false color, distinct color values are assigned to specific IRE ranges, allowing you to see every luminance value in the image at a glance. It's very similar to the waveform in terms of what it's displaying, but rather than filling a graph, which requires a certain amount of interpretation, false color just overlays your image. This is also great when evaluating the contrast range of an image as you can quickly and easily see what sort of ratios are playing out in the scene. Scopes are not only useful in production though, they're indispensable when it comes to post-production. Evaluating the footage and normalizing any differences in exposure or color across scenes is what color correction is all about. And since we know we can't trust monitors, but we can trust our scopes, understanding them is vital to a successful workflow. The RGB parade should look fairly familiar. It's essentially a waveform. But instead of viewing luminance, we're measuring saturation from 0 to 100 of the red, green, and blue channels. Each section of color represents the whole image from left to right. The y-axis is still measured from 0 to 100 and represents that particular color channel's saturation. For a well-balanced image, each of the three colors should be roughly equal. The vector scope is excellent for precisely matching color between shots, while ensuring that the colors are not over or under saturated. It's laid out like a color wheel. We have red, blue, and green, and we have magenta, cyan, and yellow. The distance from the center of the circle represents a color's intensity. Black, white, and neutral grays will be smack dab in the center at zero as they have no color to them while colors reaching the outer targets here are at 100% saturation and outside of broadcast limits. Now these targets here represent 75% saturation, which is considered maximum saturation for broadcast. This line here represents skin tone and works by honing in on the color of the blood under someone's skin. 
by isolating your subject's skin tone and aligning it here, you can always be sure the color is accurate. For more tips and tutorials, be sure to subscribe to the B&H YouTube channel. Thank you very much.